and be happy always. Once again, welcome to the class of Economics in Shachis Academy, where we discuss the topics with very simple and easy tips. The topic for today is scope of macroeconomics. Do you want to watch this video in Hindi? Then you can watch our Hindi series and the link for that is given below. Okay, so today's topic is scope of macroeconomics. Right, so what do you mean by scope? Scope means the topics that we cover under any subject, right? The topics that will be covered under uh, the scope of macroeconomics are very important. And first of all, this question is very important. Scope of macroeconomics, you may get this question for six marks in exams and you will have to answer this question in detail. But when you answer the questions in detail, what happens? We forget the points that we have memorized. To counter that problem, what do we do? We frame codes. Now, we have framed a code for that. That is NEMPEG. N-E-M-P-E-G. So, N here stands for national income. E for environment. M for money. P for price levels. E for exchange rate. And G for government. So, it's so simple to memorize them. And when you tend to write this answer in exam, you just have to remember the score and the concepts related with the first, with the first alphabet of that word that is N for national income right E for employment M for money here P for price levels E for exchange rate and G for government in this manner you won't forget right repeat you can repeat it always then we will start by discussing the one by one first of all national income what is the concept of national income that we will study under that topic concept of national income is National income is the sum total of all the factor incomes that accrues to the normal residents of the nation or any country. Normal residents means people like you and me who are residing in any nation for one year or more than one year. And whose economic interest lies in that nation. We will discuss that topic in detail in subsequent lectures but for now it's sufficient for us. Right? So, the people who receive their incomes from that particular nation are the normal residents and living in that nation for one or more years. Right? So, then aggregates related to national income. We will also study aggregates. What are the aggregates related to national income? That is GDP, GNP, NNP, NDP, etc. and net factor income from abroad. GDP is what? Gross domestic product. GNP is gross national product. NDP is net domestic product and NNP is net national product, right? And net factor income from abroad. Apart from that, we will also discuss a national income at factor cost and national income at market prices. Then, we will also discuss measurement techniques of national income. What are the measurement techniques of national income? These are value added method, VA method, that is value added method, right? Then we have Income method and expenditure method. Expenditure method. All these will be studied under the scope of macroeconomics and we will discuss them in our next tutorials. Right. Then employment. Next topic after national income is employment. This is very important. Under the scope of macroeconomics, this is very important. And we will discuss what? Here we discuss Keynes theory of employment. Right. Keynes, that is John Menard Keynes, he was a very famous economist and pertaining to macroeconomics basically. Keynesian theory of employment will be discussed. Theory of unemployment, that is people who do not get employment or to earn their livelihood, any occupation, those are known as what? Unemployed. So the problem pertaining to people who do not get employment is known as unemployment. So the problem of unemployment will be discussed here. Okay, then we have to remove the problem of unemployment. Then the measures to remove the problem of unemployment will also be discussed. And different types of unemployment like disguised unemployment that is caused when you require only one person to do any particular task. Suppose we require uh, to dig a, a small pit, we require only one labor and we are using four or five laborers for that. In that case, the people who are additionally employed, right, we require only one labor and we are using three or four laborers for that same task. The additional people who are employed over there are disguised. That means this is hidden, right? 
this is not open unemployment and that is known as hidden unemployment then we have cyclical unemployment going to business cycles then we have frictional unemployment and structural unemployment as well and we will discuss them in detail under the theory of employment right and the measures to remove unemployment will also be discussed there so we have national income and then employment right then we have money right we don't have space over here so i'm rubbing this over here then money what are the functions of money all of us know that we require money in our day-to-day -day transactions speculative motives and others also then for that money who creates this money who creates a supply for money the banks basically the rbi that is we were discussed rbi that is uh, not specifically rbi we can write the central banks of any nation central bank what is the central bank FX bank of the nation controlling all other banks or the monetary system of that nation or the supply of money right so central bank the functions of central bank would be discussed over here central bank that is B for bank then we will discuss all the commercial banks commercial banks that is for example we have Axis bank we have ICICI bank we have Punjab and Sindh bank we have SBI bank that is state bank of India Punjab national bank all these banks create credit 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 means they give out loans to people so that is also studied under their topic of money under macroeconomics right and the monetary policy of central bank is also studied over here so we'll discuss all these things in detail afterwards for now it's okay then price levels what are the price levels we discuss general price levels over here general means like your inflation that is increase in the price of commodities that is if you can purchase this marker for just 20 rupees or 40 rupees its price will increase and this marker will become of 100 rupees the so inflation right the increase in price of commodities is known as inflation so we discuss under price levels we discuss inflation inflation deflation that is decrease in the price of commodities and it's a loss to businessman here businessmen are on a lot of profit and here they lose or they, they incur losses over here so this is increase in prices of commodities and here the price of commodities decrease this is decrease in prices of commodities and this causes uh, loss to producers and this causes profit to producers related to them are inflationary and deflationary gaps we will also study inflationary gaps and deflationary gaps but into our price levels this also we'll discuss in detail later on then we have exchange rates exchange what do you mean by exchange that is getting something in lieu of another thing so exchange rates of currencies is discussed in our macroeconomics exchange rates of currencies means that how much money you have to give in one currency to get another currency for example you have to give rupees how many rupees 69.57 rupees to get one dollar right one dollar so the price of one dollar is 69.57 rupees right this is exchange rate simply so the functioning of different currencies is uh, studied under uh, your macroeconomics and we study the functioning of our currency in different international markets right so internationally what is the function of our economy right exchange rates and we also study balance of payments over here balance of payments that is how much we import and how much we export how much currency we are getting that is foreign currency we are receiving and how much we are spending to get the imports in our nation right so that is also studied under exchange rates then comes your government this is the very important topic that is government we study the functioning of government under macroeconomics why because government controls all these components of economy right then how does government functions it functions through budget that is creation and presentation of budget what is budget anyway budget is the uh, your statement of expenditure and receipts of government how does the government receive income what is the source of income yes all of us know that we pay taxes to government that is our direct taxes that is income tax indirect taxes commodity taxes like gst uh, that is uh, your goods and services tax 
in form of state GST or your central GST and other types of corporate taxes and business houses also pay taxes that all goes to whom? This goes to government. Then government receives income in the form of taxes and it spends on various developmental and infrastructural activities like building roads, building bridges, building hospitals, building schools and giving out old age pensions, spending on your old age homes, giving out for unemployed people as well and giving subsidies, right? Like LPG subsidies to people, ration shops are opened by government. All these functions are performed by government through this revenue. So government functions through its revenue and expenditure, right? So, and it also controls the whole economic activity of the nation in your uh, internal economy and external as well. That is, how does an economy function in world market? That is international trade. What is the level of our economy internationally? That is also viewed and that is also controlled and taken care by your government. So, these are all the components of your, what? Scope of macroeconomics. So, I hope you will certainly memorize this topic and all the points with the help of it, this code, right? This code will, will help you out in memorizing and you will never forget when you write these terms in exams. Okay, in recalling there won't be any problem. So just memorize what? NEMPEG, N-E-M-P-E-G, N for national income, E for employment, M for money, P for price levels, E for exchange rates and balance of payments, and G for government. So you have repeated with me? Okay. So I hope this topic and this explanation was of some help to you. And to get further updates, you can press the bell icon and please press the bell icon. Certainly. And then you can subscribe the channel. Please subscribe it as well so that you can receive our updates by and by. And you can watch our videos in Hindi as well. Thank you so much.